In February of 2013, the U.S. Food and Drug Administration approved the Argus II retinal prosthesis for patients with advanced retinitis pigmentosa, which is an inherited degenerative eye disease in which the photoreceptors of the retina do not work like they are supposed to. The same system was approved in Europe two years prior. This approval was based on a clinical trial in which almost all of the 30 participants were able to perform basic tasks better with the prosthesis than without it. Some patients were actually able to recognize large letters and words, be able to step off a street curb, and match black, gray, and white socks. The system that was approved by the FDA, the Argus Retinal Stimulation System, consists of both in vivo, which are internal parts, and in vitro, external parts. The in vivo parts include the artificial retina that you see in this picture. This retina consists of an array of micro-sized electrodes. Also in vivo is a receiver transmitter. The in vitro parts are a video camera built into the eyeglasses of the patient, a video processor, and a cable. Before we talk about how this retinal prosthesis works, let's take a quick look at how the eye works. Normal vision occurs when light enters the eye through the cornea, then the lens. The lens focuses the eye on the retina, which is the innermost lining of the eyeball. The retina contains photoreceptor cells, which convert the light to electrical impulses. These impulses travel into the optic nerve, then to the brain, where the information is processed. In retinal diseases, such as age-related macular degeneration and retinitis pigmentosa, the photoreceptor cells in the retina do not work for one reason or another. That's where the artificial retina comes into play. As I mentioned before, the artificial retina system consists of a video camera, video processor, antenna receiver, and the artificial retina, which is the electrode array. A miniature video camera housed in the patient's glasses captures an image or a scene. The video is sent to a small patient-worn computer or the video processing unit where it is processed and transformed into instructions that are then sent back to the glasses via an external cable. These instructions are transmitted wirelessly to an antenna. The signals are then sent to the artificial retina or the electrode array. This artificial retina is an electrostudded array placed on or beneath the surface of the retina. Each electrode is less than 100 micrometers in diameter, which is approximately the diameter of a human hair. Light from the receiver hits the electrodes in the array and is converted to electrical impulses. These impulses bypass the damaged photoreceptors and stimulate the retina's remaining cells, which transmit the visual information along the optic nerve to the brain. The brain perceives patterns of light and dark spots corresponding to the electrode stimulated. With practice, patients learn to interpret these visual patterns. These are some images that were generated by a vision stimulator to give us an idea of what a patient with an artificial retina device could see. Increasing the number of electrodes in the retina array results in more visual perceptions and higher resolution vision. In the Argus 1, there were 16 electrodes, or 16 pixels, and it took the patients about 15 seconds to recognize objects using the retinal implant. In the Argus 2, there are 60 pixels, and the processing time was brought down to 2 to 3 seconds. Argus 2 had enough resolution for patients to see the edges of doors or the shape of a building. Argus 3 is being designed with more than 200 pixels, and Argus 4 is anticipated to have at least 1,000 pixels, if not more. The hope is that with the 1,000 pixels, one might actually have facial recognition. These are some of the challenges and goals for future retinal prostheses. We want increased resolution for that facial recognition. The implanted retina needs to be smaller, have more electrodes, and be more compatible with the curvature of the eye. There has also been talk about eventually making all of the components in vivo or inside the eye. To be able to do this, all components will need to be biocompatible, and the batteries will need to be able to last a very, very long time. For more information about the retinal prosthesis and other therapeutic devices that use microsystem components, 
Download the BioMIMS Therapeutic Learning Module from the SCME website. Thank you for viewing this presentation.